Let's look at uh, adding and taking away of basic fractions. Okay, a technique that um, many people forget if they don't revise it, but it's really quite simple. Let's have a look at number one. If you have three eighths and you add to it two eighths, the answer is really simple. But please, 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 don't fall into the trap of saying three plus two is five, eight plus eight is sixteen. The answer is not five sixteenths. Think of it like this, if you had 3 eighths plus 2 eighths, okay, how about 3 cats plus 2 cats? You'd say to me the answer is 5 cats. 3 dogs plus 2 dogs, 5 dogs. So 3 eighths plus 2 eighths is 5 eighths. And it's as simple as that. So what you need to do is simply, if they're both over 8, then the answer is going to be so many eighths. 3 of them plus 2 of them, the answer is 5 of them, 5 eighths. The same thing works for taking away. So if I had 7 ninths take away 2 ninths, just like 7 cats take away 2 cats would be 5 cats, 7 ninths take away 2 ninths, the answer is 5 ninths. Okay, you do not say 7 take 2 is 5, 9 take 9 is nothing. That's absolute nonsense. Okay, you've got 7 ninths take away 2 ninths, 5 ninths. We come on to ones like this. Now this is obviously more difficult. It's more difficult because the two bottom uh, lines are not the same. So we've got two different types of fraction. You've got one third plus one sixth. They're not the same type of fraction. So it's not just a case of what happened in the first two examples. What you need to do in this example, you certainly don't do this, one plus one is two, three plus six is nine. That is not the right thing to do. What you've got to do is change one or both of the fractions so they've both got the same bottom line. Let me show you what I mean. What I'm going to do is simply double the three here to get six. Now to keep this fraction exactly the same as the one third, I need to double the top line as well. So I've doubled the top and the bottom of that fraction to become two sixth. Why have I done that? Because this is one sixth. And now both fractions have the same bottom line. And we've got an example like question one now. So I've got two sixths, same as a third, plus one sixth, add them together, nice and easy, that's the same as three sixths. Two sixths plus one sixth is three sixths. Uh, one final point about three sixths. Three sixths is a fraction which, in the final line, actually will cancel itself. Share by three, one, share by three, two, the actual proper answer that the examiner would like to see is one half, and that's the answer. Okay, so you need to get the six on the bottom line for both, then you can add them up using the same technique as number one and two, and then finally in this case you have to cancel it to get the answer a half. So if I do number four, like this, you might have three fifths, uh, take away, let's say, one tenth, Okay, you can't take these away as they stand because they're different types of fraction, so you make them both into the same type of fraction. I can do this simply by doubling the three fifths top and bottom to get six over ten. Double the top, double the bottom. Six tenths is the same thing as three fifths, they mean the same thing. They look different, but they're the same thing. You leave the other one alone because it's already over ten. So six tenths take away one tenth, that's nice and easy, it's just five tenths. Five tenths is the answer. Be careful that it cancels. So you should share that by five and share that by five, you get the answer a half. Okay, that's the answer to that. I'll do a couple more. Number five, sometimes you'll have something like a half plus one third to add together. Now this is a little bit more difficult because in the previous two examples they didn't have the same number on the bottom line, but it was very easy to get the, the number on the bottom line the same. We left one of them the same, the ten stayed the same, and we just doubled the other one, and you got the same number. Well, in this case, that's not going to happen because if you double the two, you get four. And we've only got a three there. If you double the three, you get six, and well, that's not the same as two. So it's not just a case of leaving one alone and multiplying the other by two or whatever. Uh, it could be any number you like. It's just not going to work. What you're going to have to do is change both of them. And in this particular case, what I'm going to do is work out something which in maths we call the LCM. It's the lowest common multiple. When it's not a really easy one like these, where you can just keep one the same and say double the other one, what I'm going to do is realise I've got to change both of them. And to change them, I'm going to use the LCM, which in this case is 6. It's the smallest number that 2 and 3 will actually go into. 
2 goes into 6, 3 goes into 6. So that means I can change them both into 6. You find the smallest number that 2 goes into and 3 goes into. It's 6. You can actually get that number, if you're not sure, by multiplying the 2 together. 2 times 3 is 6. So you can actually work it out by just multiplying the two bottom lines if you want. So the first one here, to change the 2 into a 6, I've had to treble it. If you want to put this in, you can do. So what I've got to do is treble the top line. So 1 times 3 is 3. So I'm changing the half into 3 sixths. Plus, to change the 3 into the 2, I double it. So I need to double the top line. So the 1 gets multiplied by 2, you get 2. So the sum, instead of a half plus a third, becomes 3 sixths plus 2 sixths. Because they're both now over 6, it's really easy. 3 cats plus 2 cats, 5 cats. 3 sixths plus 2 sixths, 5 sixths. There you go. There's the answer. Okay, so this is now a method that you should be very familiar with for paper 1. Obviously, if you've got paper 2 and you have to do this sum, you could use the fraction button on your calculator. It would do it for you. So you just press 1 fraction button 2 plus 1 fraction button 3, press equals, and the answer on the display would be 5 sixths. It'll do it for you. But this is for paper 1, where you've got no calculator. Do one more. Let's say you had uh, one third and you're going to take away a quarter. Got to work that out. Okay, well, it's not easy um, just to change one of them and leave the other one alone. You're going to have to change both of them here. Uh, if you try doubling the three, you get six, and that's not six. That's no good. Uh, well, I would write down the LCM at the side, the lowest common multiple, which is the smallest number three and four go into, if you're not sure what it is. Try multiplying the two numbers together. Three fours, twelve. And twelve will work. So we change them both to twelve. You times the three by four to get twelve. So times the one by the same thing, you get four. You need to times the four by three to get twelve. So I times the one by three get 3. So 1 third take away a quarter is exactly the same sum as doing 4 twelfths take away 3 twelfths. 4 twelfths take away 3 twelfths is 1 twelfth. And there you go. So there's the basic technique. If they're like this, with the same bottom line, they're really easy. If you do not have the same bottom line, then you need to change one or both of the fractions until they do have the same bottom line and then you can do the add up or the take away. That's the end of this video.